in the last video, you were introduced to randomization-based based hypothesis testing, and now we're going to do another example of it. So in this example, rather than talking about two means, we're going to talk about two proportions. All right, so say we want to test whether two proportions are equal. So in other words, our null hypothesis is P1 equals P2, and the alternative hypothesis is P1 is not equal to P2. All right, so let's just come up with an example so that this is a little bit easier to understand. Uh, imagine that you drive for both Uber and Lyft, and you are interested in um, the number of nights that you make more than $50. So imagine that you always drive for like two hours at a time, and you're wondering, okay, in those two hours, what proportion of nights do I make more than $50 when I'm driving for Uber and for Lyft? All right, so you randomly select 10 nights to drive for Uber, and you randomly um, select 10 nights to drive for Lyft, and then you work for two hours to collect your data. So you count the number of nights that you make over $50 when you're driving for Uber, and you count the number of nights out of 10 that you make over $50 when you're driving for Lyft. All right, so our null hypothesis is there's no difference between Uber and Lyft um, with respect to the number of nights that you make over $50. So in other words, P Uber equals P Lyft, or in other words, P Uber minus P Lyft equals zero. So P is, again, the proportion of nights you make over $50. All right, then our alternative hypothesis is there is a difference. So in other words, P Uber minus P Lyft is not equal to zero. Or you could say P Uber minus equals P Lyft. All right, so let's make up some original data. You go out and drive those 10 nights for Lyft, and you drive those 10 nights for Uber. And maybe for Uber, um, four out of the 10 nights, you make over $50. And for Lyft, seven out of the 10 nights, you make over $50. All right, so there's our original data set. We can calculate our test statistic, which is the point estimate of P Uber minus P Lyft. We can calculate our test statistic, P Uber hat minus P Lyft hat. So for Uber, 40% of the time you made over $50. For Lyft, 70% of the time you made over $50. So P Uber minus P Lyft is 0.4 minus 0.7, or in other words, negative 0.3. All right, so this is our original data is test statistic. And now we know we need to go and compare that negative 0.3 to figure out is point, negative 0.3 extreme or not. So we need some sampling distribution to compare it to. All right, so we have to create that sampling distribution by randomly reassigning this data. All right, so let's look at this original data again. We have four out of 10 successes for Uber, seven out of 10 successes for Lyft. So that means that we have 20 trials, right, and 11 successes. So if there really was no difference between Uber and Lyft, then these 11 successes could have been distributed in some other way, right? So we could um, take out a bunch of cards, so maybe we have like 11 red cards and nine blue cards, and we could use the red cards to represent making more than $50 in a night, and we could use the blue cards to represent making less than $50 in a night. So since we had 11 nights where we made more than $50 in total from this um, original data set, we're going to have 11 red cards and then nine blue cards. Okay, so we take those cards, those 20 cards, shuffle them all up, and make sure that we can't see what the color is. Um, we shuffle them all up, and then we're going to deal 10 of them to Uber and 10 of them to Lyft. So we shuffle them all up and then deal out 10 for one pile, 10 for the other pile. And we're going to call this pile Uber and this pile Lyft. So then we flip the cards over and look at them and we count, okay, how many red cards does Uber have? And how many red cards does um, Lyft have? And so then we can calculate, okay, it looks like Uber has 50% and Lyft has 50%. So then our test statistic, P Uber hat minus P L hat, would be 50% minus 50%, or in other words, 0.5 minus 0.5, or zero. So then we would go off and record that test statistic so that we could later plot it out. All right, so that would represent one resample. So now we would take all those cards, shuffle them back up again, and make sure that we can't see the colors. And again, 
do another resample. So we would randomly choose 10 of those cards to be in the Uber pile and 10 of the cards to be in the Lyft pile. Then we'd look at them and calculate the proportion of red cards for Uber and the proportion of red cards for Lyft. Once we had each of those proportions, find the difference, P Uber minus P Lyft, and record it. So we would do that over and over and over until we have a pretty healthy number of test statistics, so maybe like 10,000 test statistics or something like that. Once we have a pretty good number of test statistics, then we could plot out our sampling distribution. In other words, we would make a histogram of all those test statistics that we got from our resamples and from our original data. Okay, so maybe this is a sampling distribution of our test statistic under the null hypothesis. So since it's built under the null hypothesis, it's going to be pretty close to centered at zero. It's not gonna be perfectly centered at zero, you know, because there's that um, randomness in the resampling, but it's going to be roughly centered at zero. And then we can find our original test statistic, which was negative 0.3. So we found our negative, 0.3 original test statistic. And what we're going to do is find the smaller tail. All right, so let's just remember for a second, our alternative hypothesis is two-tailed, right? We have, it could be that P1 is less than P2, or it could be P1 is greater than P2. So what we're going to do is look at the sampling distribution, find negative 0.3, and then find the smaller tail. So here the smaller tail is that shaded area. So now what we're going to do is calculate the proportion of test statistics that are less than or equal to negative 0.3, and that's gonna be half the p-value. So this is just like when we're doing hypothesis testing in the classical sense. If we have a two-sided alternative, we find our test statistic, find the smaller tail, and this is half the p-value. So we would just need to double it to get the entire p-value. That's just like here. We find the smaller tail, we find that proportion, and that's half our p-value. So we just double it, and that gives us our entire p-value. Okay, so that's how we would do it. Um, if you want to have a like cleaner way of writing it, then what we would do is calculate the proportion of test statistics that are less than or equal to negative 0.3 and the proportion of test statistics that are greater than or equal to negative 0.3. All right, so one of these is going to be small, one of these is gonna be big. We're gonna take the smaller one and that will represent half the p-value. So take the smaller one, double it, and you get the entire p-value. So you can think about it either two ways. You can first think, all right, just find the smaller tail, find that proportion, and double it to get our p-value when we're doing a two-sided alternative. Or you could calculate the proportion in the smaller tail, calculate the proportion in the bigger tail, find the min, and then double that to get our p-value. Okay, so we're doing this because remember, in our alternative we have that two-sided, we have p1 is not equal to p2, so we know that this one tail is only telling half of the story, so we need to double it in order to get the p-value for a two-sided alternative. All right, and then one other thing. Um, when you are putting in your sampling distribution here, you need to make sure to put in your original test statistic also. So remember, in hypothesis testing, we assume the null is true until we have evidence otherwise. So that means that our original test statistic is also formed under the null hypothesis, that P1 is equal to P2. So we want to include that in this sampling distribution here. So here we'll have all of the resample test statistics and also our original data sets test statistics. So if you have like M resamples, then that means that the proportion is going to have M plus one because we have also that original data test statistic in there. All right. Okay, so when you're doing the hypothesis testing, we're always going to be doing the tails the same way as in the classical test um, hypothesis testing. So if we had, remember in the 
Okay, so where we had an alternative that like the test stat is, or sorry, the parameter is negative. The alternative is the parameter is negative. And that means that we're going to get our sampling distribution and then the p-value is going to be the proportion of test statistics that are less than or equal to our original data test statistics. If the alternative was the parameter is positive, like it was in the hot wing example, then we generate our sampling distribution, we mark off our original data test statistic, and then we, the p-value is going to be the proportion of test statistics that are greater than or equal to our original data test statistic. And then here we're saying that if we have a two-sided alternative, in other words, the parameter is just not equal to zero, that's when we have to do this whole thing where we figure out which tail is smaller, find the proportion for the smaller tail, and then double it. 